Hey everyone, it's Mint Dragon. We're going to be playing a new RPG game called Star Traders Frontiers. It was just released through Steam Early Access. Uh, version 2.0.1 is actually the first Early Access release, the first of many, I'm sure. It's a game by the Tracy Brothers, and uh, I was fortunate enough to be on the Alpha team for this, so I'm pretty familiar with the game. Uh, and this is going to be a Let's Play series, so we're going to go through and um, show you how to set up a captain, how to play the game, how to accomplish different objectives within the game. Um, so you can go ahead and create a captain and um, go forth and plunder. So um, there's only a couple of options in this game. Uh, one's on music, which I turn way, way down, but the sound effects are really helpful and I turn those way way up so we'll be able to hear them hope I get the levels on this right but we're gonna go ahead and start with a new captain <clears throat> it comes with some predefined templates and I created one on my own here called a merchant why don't I go ahead and just delete this and we'll uh, create a new one of our own so when you create a template you're taking or you're prioritizing um, your, the experience that your captain will have, what ship he has, the number of contacts and how powerful they are, attributes and skills which are very RPG uh, centric, and you can prioritize these however you want. So you can move them up, move them down, and uh, the higher they are, the the better settings you can put on those. So for example, contacts at the very top, I'll be able to get eight contacts and the starting influence of these contacts is 175% of normal. Now, I know I'm not going to do that, but just to compare as to where I am going to have it, I'm gonna have contacts here so we can select four contacts and they have 110% of the normal starting influence that contacts have. And uh, so you just prioritize them how you like. Ship being near the top, you'll be able to get a bigger ship uh, from the start rather than starting with a smaller ship and then upgrading it later on or purchasing a new ship and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the attributes. They're standard attributes you'd find in RPG games, strength, quickness, fortitude, on the mental side, charisma, wisdom, and resilience. And uh, since I put it at the top, I can spend 52 points in my attribute pool. For fortitude and resilience, I'm gonna do 26. Same with wisdom. Charisma, I'm gonna put it 24 and use the rest up in quickness. The ship, since we have it so high, we can get a pretty big one. I'm going to get a Guardian Interceptor. Um, it's heavily armed from the start, heavy armor. So if we do get attacked early on in the game, we have a good chance of survival. Um, good chance of not taking on a lot of extra damage. Contacts. We are going to have a Prince as a contact. Now your, your contacts that you have, you will find more throughout the game, but in your starting ones, it's always smart to get a couple that have missions. Uh, missions are an important part of the game. It's how you build reputation, not only within the faction, but within the contacts. And the stronger they are, the more things they can do for you. So a prince can offer missions. He can give me a rank in his faction, trade permits within his faction, death edicts within his faction. He can introduce me to other people. And he can also pardon me if I get in big trouble and for some reason, uh, my, rep, my rep falls really low within uh, my starting faction. So I'm gonna get a prince. I'm also gonna get a politician. Politician oftentimes will uh, allow me to, be, uh, to get a special recruit such as a diplomat, which is always good to have on your vessel. Uh, I'm gonna get a weapon stealer and a fixer. And a weapon stealer and a fixer can sell me gear um, of course, you can also meet these type of people throughout your gameplay, but I'm just going to pick them up front. So I have my four contacts. Experience wise, you can start currently as a bounty hunter, explorer, merchant, 
military officer, pirate, smuggler, spy, and zealot. I'm going to start off with a merchant and make lots of money, upgrade the ship, improve the weapons, um, and then I'm going to find other people to take on other jobs. And um, But my primary thing is going to be a kind of a, a merchant who carries a big stick with his ship and can blow other people out of the sky. I have skills at the bottom, so I have no skill points to play. Let's go ahead and save this template as Merchant. I'll call him Merchant 1. Save him. Now, now that I created this Merchant, I can come in and start a new game with those settings um, anytime I want. And uh, so that's, that's a cool thing about the ship. This game also has different maps. We can play on the default map, which has 38 quadrants, and then uh, within those quadrants there are planets, and then on the planets there are landing zones, so pretty big map. Uh, everything is procedurally generated, and so you can create a new map at any time. I'm going to go ahead and create one here for us to use. I'm going to up the quadrants to 40, which is the highest available currently. Maximum density. Um, which means that the planets are going to be clustered closer together more so than if it were very sparse density. That means they would be further apart. You'd have long runs um, to where there's only you know one planet to get to the next planet to get to the next planet. And uh, so we will just call this 40 max and save it. The other thing you can see here is um, there are map seeds. So once you create a map, let me just back out of here. We'll go to 40 max. Whoops. 40 max. There's a map seed here, and we could actually copy that to our clipboard by clicking there. Um, so you can create uh, a map if you really, really like it. You can copy or write down this map seed, share it among your friends on the forum, and um, you can all play off the same map. Also, if you are going to be on, uh, you know, playing on mobile, if uh, you have an Android phone or a tablet or uh, an iPad, you can plug the same seed in and have the same map. And, you know, the advantages of using the same map over time is you kind of have an idea to lay the land. Um, so you can you can try out, uh, you know, let's say you get really good at being a merchant on this particular map. You can then try out being a spy, but you know sort of where all the planets are, and um, that definitely gives you an advantage. So once we get the map, we pick our faction. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different ones to play. They all have different advantages. Um, an example of it is Clan Javat. They get a bonus of plus eight on their economy on mining, refinery, and industrial zone uh, planets or uh, landing zones, and a plus two to the starport rating. So um, on these mining, refinery, and industrial zones, you know they're going to have a really good economy. Um, so if you're doing some trading, um, more of your planets are going to have more things to sell, wider variety, and larger volume. So that's a big bonus. Um, House Saloon has plus three economy on any landing zone and plus three to the starport on any landing zone. And so if your starport rating's higher, um, you know, you'll have you'll have fuel there of course. You'll be able to do repairs, more likely to do repairs with that zone bonus. More likely that uh, the zone rating will be high enough that you can upgrade your ships or perhaps even purchase new ships. Um, so the loons are really good to start on. We're just going to pick that one. Plus, I think the flag there is cool. Um, so I mentioned this just came out on Steam Early Access. It's on Windows, Macintosh, Linux, and... Um, once they come out of early access and go into uh, their official release, they're gonna they're gonna roll things back to uh, mobile and do a, a good port on that. 
All right, so difficulty, lots of different choices, goes from basic all the way up to impossible. And with each choice um, at hard is when permadeath comes in, but your enemies get higher, risks get harder, and you get fewer rewards, fewer bonuses. Um, there will also be a custom setting, although it's not available right now. We're gonna keep it basic, um, no permadeath, Enemies are at 60%, risks are at 80%. Whenever we have combat, we get a 25% boost and we get more bonuses uh, right out of the gate. So it just makes it easier. Uh, here's our captain. If we don't like his face, we can change it. There's lots of different choices. You can change the uniform up. You can even change the gender. So we can go and uh, pick a uniform that's kind of cool, pick a face that's kind of cool, and we can even customize it further than that. So, all right, let's just keep it at that. Captain Revington. And we're going to go ahead and launch the game. So the game is made up of the template, the map, the faction, the difficulty. There's a little introduction here, which is kind of nice. It, for new players, it'll explain a little bit about your star trader that they're new you can see the Thaloon faction here flags um, so obviously you're part of the Thaloon faction I'm gonna go ahead and skip this but definitely watch it when you first play through the game um, and it's telling us that we have entered a um, orbit of a planet and skip 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 all right, so this is our starting view. We're in space. We are in one of these quadrants, and here you can see there's a variety of planets, and then on the planets, there are uh, different factions which are controlling the planets. These circles on the right-hand side are actually telling you about um, what services are available in the landing zone. This circle here is indicating that one of my contacts is on there. All right, the first thing we're going to do is point out a couple of things. We have sort of um, a dashboard, just like a car, up at the top. It's letting me know that I have enough fuel to make a hyperwarp jump. It's letting me know that there are crew members which need updated. Um, it's letting me know um, this is a Thaloon flag. I have 10 rep with them. We're in a Thaloon controlled sector. So we will see this flag whenever we're flying around in space here. Um, since it's a Thaloon sector, most likely we'll have, you know, mainly friendly ships if we come across them. Uh, this is sort of our home turf, as it were. On the bottom, you have uh, indication of the number of credits you have, your cargo bay, this will tell you what missions you have currently. The introduction was telling us we're going to be offered a mission to take a passenger somewhere. Um, this will show us our known contacts. So we started with four contacts of our own, a fixer, a prince, politician, and a weapons dealer. So those are the ones we pre-selected in the beginning. And then there is an Arbiter, which uh, in the introduction, this Arbiter wants to be taken to another planet. So this is a mission that will be offered to us when we land on that planet. Um, the other nice thing about these screens is you can do things with them. It's letting us know how far the contact is from us. So this first guy, this weapon stealer is zero units from us 14 units 19 units 22 units this last fixer is actually five jumps away and we can filter just down to you know our local contacts if we meet one of them we really like them for one reason or another we can star them on a certain color and then we can filter by that color uh, so there are a number of cool ways that uh, this game helps you with as deep as it is. And you can even sort it. So at a certain point, you may have 20, 30 different contacts and you're just looking either for a certain faction 
or you're looking for a politician that's closest to you. Um, so you can sort and filter and do lots of cool things with it. So that's on the dashboard here. These are rumors. So when rumors happen, uh, you may hear rumors as you're meeting other people in spice halls, um, which is, for lack of a better term, a bar on these landing zones. And in these spice halls, you'll learn about new rumors, either places are being shut down or there are xeno aliens in certain sectors. So that allows you to see all the different rumors. And again, you can filter them, sort them by distance, etc. Maybe you're a xeno hunter and you really do want to find out uh, where the xeno are located. Here are the factions and the faction politics going on with House Thaloon. They currently have a trade ban going on with Clan Javat, and they have an alliance going on with Kadar. So the Kadar faction we have an alliance with. And here you can see the other factions. Here with Kadar, it's letting us know that we have an alliance, which we obviously Javat. They have a trade ban going on. Um, with the trade ban, if we try to trade, uh, you know, goods to our faction, um, Javat is going to not like us and they'll penalize us by um, taking our reputation from zero rep as a neutral to a minus 10 or a minus 20 and eventually you become known as a, as a, pre, um, uh, a war criminal if uh, you have it go deep enough. But such as life all right so that's the left side the bottom here is the amount of fuel we have this globe is telling us in this sector here that we're currently in um, here's where our ship is currently located it's a zone Muniati settlement and there is one landing zone called Longfall Capital it's a refinery so we can buy refinery goods and things that are important to a refinery, we can trade back to them. Um, and so here are the different planets, landing zones. We have population, tradeways, high-tech industrial, orbital, etc. Again, we can filter on them by visited, whether they have fuel or not whether they have contacts on them or not. So if we just do it with the ones with contacts, you can see we have contacts on these four landing zones. And again, sort by distance, etc. cetera. Um, this one next to the globe shows you the entire galaxy. So uh, when we created our map, we wanted 40 different sectors and here's where the 40 are and here is where we're located. And we use hyper warp gates to jump between them. Um, so it's a pretty big map. All right, let's close this down, back off of it. There is a consult button here, which uh, it is still early it was only inserted a, a couple of weeks ago so it'll be fleshed out a lot more in this early access but it's really meant to be a non-intrusive help function so depending on what screen you're on um, it will give you information about that and uh, so the mechanisms there there's just not a lot of meat in it at this point but you do have resources you do have a form with these guys um, they do have um, uh, wiki setup for the game which walks you through a lot there's been a lot of work put into that and then this console button is here um, there is a status button which allows you to see everything about your ship so it lets you know um, you know the ship's mass the amount of fuel that's in it some info on the game uh, the start date how many turns you've gone through the difficult you're in and then information about your crew and their their current skills so um, your pilot piloting ability ship ops gunnery etc uh, you want to keep them over 100 definitely and uh, 
they max out at 150%. So you're aiming for the middle of here. That gives you the maximum amount of dice to roll for these tests that, that come up or uh, RPG-like tests. And you'll see that in a bit. And uh, here are your skills, uh, repair, tactics, command. As we get into upgrading the crew, we'll be able to see that. So anywhere you see a plus sign on here, that means a crew is ready to upgrade. Now they will level up and depending on what level they hit, you may be able to upgrade their job or their jobs upgrade by themselves. And other times you're able to upgrade their talents. So we're gonna walk through this. Um, sorry for running so long on this one, but I am trying to just get through the basics. Then we'll take a quick break and come back with part two and actually start playing the game. So on the captain, we can add a talent. I'm going to uh, now cap a merchant at this current level has rank one talents available to them. Wise counsel is a great one to get for a merchant. It's uh, you'll pass a negotiation test. Negotiation tests are used a lot in missions. So I'm going to go ahead and get that for them. Here is uh, another officer. They are currently a doctor. And they also have latent command talent, so it's not bad to get them some type of command job. I'm going to go ahead and put commander in here. The next is a quartermaster. Quartermaster goes great with Zealot. Now, um, adding these second jobs, they can actually do up to three different jobs. Um, and so you look for combinations that play well off each other. So Quartermaster has Ship Ops, Command, and Intimidation. Zealot has Command, Intimidation, and Blades. And uh, so I'm going to put them together and ultimately I'm going to add Swordsman skills to it. And he's going to become one heck of a combat officer all right this guy is an engineer engineer I normally pair with a mechanic because the repair and electronics and repair electronics and ship ops so they go well together and the last one is a navigator I'm going to go ahead and even though we have a doctor, I'm going to add more doctor skills at this point. The talent I'm trying to get is this automatically pal uh, passes a failed doctor test. So when we run into dice roll situations where we're being tested on um, a doctor test, if we pass it, great. If we fail it, this talent will kick in and it will prevent um, crew from getting hurt uh, in space or during an accident as we're exploring um, or some other reason. So the medical staff talent is really important. In fact, what we're gonna do early in the upgrades is try to collect as many save talents as we can before worrying about the other types of talents. All right, that's everyone we needed to upgrade. And anything else that we have on this, we will go ahead and uh, let's see, what was the contact we had here? That's our weapon stealer. I'm gonna go ahead and visit the politician. So by going to my contacts page, I can actually set the waypoint. And then we're gonna fly to that planet. And what I want to do is to get a mission. So I'm going to meet with this politician and I'm going to find some missions that look good to me. This one is simply carrying a crate to the planet it looks like that we just came from, the Muniati settlement. And when we do that, we're going to get paid uh, 4,700 credits, so that sounds good. I am going to go ahead and accept the mission. Uh, 
Uh, see, he is going to let me recruit a diplomat. All right. So with that mission, I'm going to go ahead and complete this mission. You can see here above the planet, there's a target. So that means there's an active mission going there. You can also go to your mission screen, select that, choose the waypoint, and off we go by hitting the navigate button. Alrighty, let's land here. Now by completing that mission, we've been paid. It was a one-way trip. Can we gain some rep with House Thaloon? We gain some rep with Yanni Lork, who was that politician. And that politician gained one influence with the faction. So all is good. All right, with that, just going to back out of this game to get to the menu button. We're going to go to the main menu. And I will see you guys next time. We'll go off and start our career as a merchant. Take care, guys.